Well, thank you so much for agreeing to do this. Oh my God. How did you find me? You know, I interviewed your mom, right? I actually did not know that unless I think you told me that and then I knew that, but I didn't um, know that. Okay. So how did you find me? I just, you know, female CEO, badass person. Oh, that's so funny. Do you just troll around looking for women on the internet? Totally. You're like a stalker. <laughs> yeah. hundred percent. You gotta start somewhere. <laughs> I'm just somewhere. looking for women on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're an, an only... internet person, so you know. Uh, I guess. You get, yeah. how, you get how it is. Okay. Yeah. Are you ready? Sorry. Okay, Miriam. This All is right. Miriam's show. Yeah. A rich man's world. Hey everyone, this is Faking It, and I have an incredible guest on my show today. I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Erica, for coming on. Thank you for having me. The badass boss CEO of Barstool. Yeah. Incredible company. And I have so many questions that I want to ask you. Okay, great. And I'm so grateful that you're here. I'm like worried we're going to have a nipple slip. Oh my God, yeah. The shirt is very risky. If you want to put it on your jacket. Here, that's a good idea. It's loose. Thank it's you so, so much. Cute. I'm definitely going to keep this new like podcast. You should. <laughs> <laughs> women should help other women. No, literally. This is an slip. example of women supporting women. Yeah, I love it. Right. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Okay, um, get me. All right. So I have so many questions I want to ask you okay. about your experience in life generally. Okay. And the first thing I want to start with is in the beginning. So I did a lot of research on who you are. Okay. And your first job, you worked at Fidelity. Yes. Right? And first real in, job. Yeah, your first real job. And that was in the finance department, right? It was, or, yes, it was in the legal department. The legal department, right? Yeah. You're thinking about becoming a lawyer. Yes, that's right. Right. And so you're getting like a good paid salary there. Yeah. It was only uphill, safe cushion, everything was good. But yeah. then you decide to make this jump mm-hmm. into the digital mm-hmm. advertising department. Mm-hmm. And that like took your salary down by like four times what you're yes. making there. So what inspired you to make that leap of faith and start doing something that was super unsecure from getting the secure position? Sure. So I, um, so when I, when I graduated from college, the economy was great Yeah. and I got this, I had interned at Fidelity in the same department that I got a job in or in an adjacent department or something. Right. And when I got the job, I was making $50,000 a year, which is a, was a, a lot, a lot of money in yeah. the late nineties. Um, and it's still, I think kind of a lot of money now, but, um, and I hated it. I was so bored. I would basically go out all night with my friends. I would get my work done in like 25 minutes. And then mm-hmm. I spent all day emailing the escapades of what we did the night before. Mm-hmm. And, but I was bored. I had this office that was very beige and it had like all these law books in it. And it just felt, um, it felt like claustrophobic in a way. I didn't like the legal department because in at Fidelity anyways, it was all about risk. It was like mm-hmm. the least risk possible. It was about mm-hmm. prevention. It was like right. defensive. Yeah. Um, and I remember walking over the, the advertising group was in a different building and they had these desks. It was loud. They had stuffed animals all over their stuff because we did a lot of business with discovery and they were always sending stuffed animals. It was bizarre. Um, but anyways, I wanted to do something that was creative and I felt like that I only have one life and I had just graduated from college yeah. and I was like, fuck if I'm going to spend my entire life like wilting in a legal department. Mm-hmm. Um, so I made the jump. I met the HR person at Fidelity who was like, you're a fucking idiot. Like, mm-hmm. why would you ever do this? I went, I made $19,000. Wow. Yeah. I racked up so much credit card debt because I was used to living life right. making $50,000. Yeah. Um, but it was the single best thing, you know, one of the single best things I've ever done. And is that because I hear a lot of people say that you should follow your passion and the money will follow? Did you I believe so. that? Did you internalize that? And how? I always, it's a, it's a good question. I really felt, look, I think experience matters. Like the right. more you can touch, the more you can do, the more you can learn, the better off you are. Mm-hmm. I think when you're in a place and I feel like a lot of people your age, like I'm reading so much right now about the, what is it called? Like the quiet quitting. Have you read about quiet quitting? I want to talk about quiet quitting with you. But so quiet quitting is when you basically quit your job without quitting your job. You're like, you want to be invisible. You don't want anybody to bother you. You just want to like everyone to leave you alone. And that was like the opposite of what I wanted. I didn't want that. Mm. I was in my early twenties and I felt like, shit, I don't have kids. I'm not married. I do have student loans, but like, fuck it. I want to go learn and do and be fulfilled in my life. Mm -hmm. And I think making the decision to jump to something where, you know, where I could learn, where I could experiment, where I could do things was really important. Mm -hmm. And then I also feel like, you know, I think what's really hard is people are afraid of risk Mm -hmm. and, 
and that's too bad because usually when every you know most people are optimists, so mm -hmm. everything is going to work out. Even if you make the worst decision ever, right? It's usually you're going to tell yourself you did the right thing, mm -hmm. and so all risk works out in mm -hmm. a way. And I. I really felt comfortable with that. And then I, you know, to the salary thing, it sucked. Right. Like I was eating like, what's that? Like cup of noodles thing? Like ramen, disgusting. Like, yeah, ramen, cup right? of ramen and... like cup of, like I yeah, had yeah. no money. Um, <laughs> I had no money. I shared an apartment with like six girls. Like wow. three of us were in the same room. Like that's a terrible life. Yeah. Um, but, and I always felt like I was chasing to get back to that $50,000. Mm -hmm. But in a way, Miriam, that like drove me. It, it like mm -hmm. really made me hungry to like get the promotion and take right. the next job because right. I wanted to get back to 50,000. Right. Um, does that make sense? That does. And it sounds like from what you're saying that you kind of had this trust in yourself that you're going to be okay. Yes. And there was that certainty in the uncertainty mm -hmm. that allowed you to just make that leap and then live that life. And you felt comfortable that you'll make it. Yeah. Even starting from and I was like, path. I have to make it. Like right. I have to figure it out. Like yeah. I think what's, you know, when you're starting your career, one is like, you don't know what you want to do when you grow up. Right. I still don't know what I want to do. I, mm -hmm. I had breakfast with someone today who was like, well, what's your next move? And right. I was like, I don't know. Like, right. I don't know. Yeah. And nobody really knows, but at least if you try things and you jump to new places, mm -hmm. you'll learn something and you're smarter than you were before. I used to say 100%. to people all, all the time that like every job you take or every assignment you do, or it, you should make five, there's five new things should open to you from doing that one thing. Yeah. And I still really feel like that. Like right. how am I, everything I do, is it opening up new things to me? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll take them. Maybe I'll be considered for them. Maybe I won't, but at least the opportunity will be there. Yeah. And it sounds like your career path in itself is you constantly trying things and moving along. Constantly, yeah. Like you did your CMO at like AOL yep. and like VP of brand at Yahoo. Now you're here at Barstool. Yeah. And so I read in a New York Times article that you were speaking in, mm -hmm. you said that you value drive and stamina, but you're bad with stagnation and complacency. Mm -hmm. And so I thought was what was really interesting about that. You is have very you said, good memory, Miriam. Thank you. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, and what I thought was really do interesting. Do you have like a photogenic memory? I do not, but okay. like my grandmother does. Okay, that's so maybe memory, you got like a titch of it. Maybe, I hope okay, so. Sorry, nice. I'm interrupting you. It's though. okay. Um, but I think that what you said there was that was interesting to me was the word stamina. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's one thing to have drive to want to do better, but it's like that everyday push of just like going forward. And mm -hmm. I'm wondering how like stamina played a role in your career trajectory and how you think of that word? Oh, like stamina. I love stamina. I think stamina right. really matters. I think most people don't have stamina. Mm -hmm. I think stamina is like getting up the next morning and like doing it all over again. Mm -hmm. Stamina is like not letting your emotions get the best of you. Stamina mm -hmm. is not letting like your self doubt get in the way of what you can accomplish or do. Like mm. stamina is really, really, really important. I, I agree with you. I think a lot of people like drive, right? Mm -hmm. Drive is sexy. Drive mm -hmm. is going to get you somewhere. Drive looks good on Instagram. Mm -hmm. Stamina is ugly. Like mm -hmm. stamina is like I'm bleary eyed. Mm -hmm. My clothes are wrinkled. I'm dealing with a bunch of shit with this, that, or the other thing like right. stamina and I'm still getting through it. So yeah. I think the reason stamina is important is mm -hmm. stamina is where you learn everything. Mm -hmm. Like if you show up the next day and do it again, you're going to get better. Right. And I think the hard thing for people right now with their careers kind of is that they don't want to go through the ugly stamina part. They just mm. want to look like they have drive. Right. And I hate, like, that drives me nuts. Mm. The other thing that I don't like is that I think the other thing that's kind of happening culturally right now is that it's kind of like, when I'm a champion, I'll train like a champion. Right. And it's like, mm, no, you got to train like a champion to got be it. a cha champion. Mm. Because if you become a champion, you know, you somehow luck your way, no, you know, network your way, get plucked into the top and right. you haven't gone through the stamina pieces and the yeah. grit and the mess and the lessons and the failures, you're not going to be great on top. Mm -hmm. And that's a really bad feeling, you know? Totally. So stamina to you is kind of just like pushing through all the hard times, constantly Definitely. going, training to become the CEO that you are Yeah, and kind of in that, that mindset. Totally. Yeah. Just being the best at what you do. Like I, you know, I never thought I was going to be a CEO. I'm so right. psyched. I am a CEO. I love being a CEO. Right. 
But I wasn't like, I'm going to be a CEO. I was right. basically like, I'd like to get back to making $50,000 and mm -hmm. to do something in the internet. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of the mindset, like what even this podcast is about. It's about faking it. It's about empowerment mm -hmm. and kind of embodying the person that you want to be. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the stamina comes in too. Just Why do like you call it faking that. it? So I call this podcast faking it. And my slogan is fake it to you, make it not yep. faking orgasms. Okay, great. That's a long <laughs> tagline. It is very long. Okay. But pretty much it's just about embodying the person that you want to be. It's okay. about believing in yourself. And I think that a big part of doing that is putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. Yeah. Kind of just faking it when you don't know what you're doing yep. and then figuring it out along the way. Okay. I yeah. love that. Yeah. So it's That's just about great. empowerment. Do people your women. age fake orgasms or no? Yes. They do they still? Do. That's sad. It's really sad. It's really, really I sad. I thought girls were kind of done with that. If you want to read a book, it's called Girls in Sex by Peggy Ornstein. Okay. And she just interviews tons of college girls from like the past five years. Uh, and you can learn about sex. And, really? Like, yeah. It's What's really the like, big takeaway? blowjobs every girl's giving blowjobs and like not getting anything in return that was my big takeaway oh, that that's I took annoying it. it was terrible I was like what like that's like it was like for me in high school that's ridiculous <laughs> that yeah, sucks I know and I was like that, there's just this inequality to there to be fair though like what? I feel like men in high school and college are just so woefully inexperienced oh, yeah. you really don't want it the other way it's gonna be right. so like painfully that's awkward true. But that's anyways, true but anyways that might not be true communication right if there's communication, communication a, yeah that's great then it would help okay things. I agree with yeah, that okay so. Miriam so yeah, so part of this podcast too, I do a lot of like sex, like therapists. Oh talks, really? So, yeah, yeah. Okay. What's so, your like big things you've learned? Big things I've learned is, I mean, like one, you have to get comfortable with your own body. Yep. That's like a huge thing. Big deal. Yeah. You have to learn how to pleasure yourself first. Okay. okay. So like get a good vibrator. Yeah. Learn your body. Okay. And then once you're comfortable in your skin, once you're comfortable touching yourself, then you bring be in another party. Bring in somebody else. Okay, yeah. got it. And then that's like a whole nother step. But All I right, think I like people that. need to work on themselves first before. Yep. Yeah. I they think can work the on same others. is true of work, don't you think? Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can't be a good boss until, until you can boss yourself. Yeah, that's really right. Well. I agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What else can I tell you? All right. So now I'd love to talk a little bit about Barstool and okay. what it's like. For you working here. So you joined okay. in 2016. Yeah. I, th I think since then you grew the company almost 4,000%. Yep. Crazy. This Just is want to say that. That's like so amazing. <laughs> That's a lot. Thank That's you. That's a lot. Yeah. Uh, and so I have just a couple questions okay. about what, so it's a media conglomerate at the end of the day, Barstool yeah. feels like that. And so what goes into the decision making behind creating this content? Has like politics ever played a role or anything at all ever played a role in what kind of content Like internal shared? politics? Or no, like just politics, like external, politics. because I know, I know in the media in general, politics plays a huge role in the content, mm. kind of content that's created. And I'm wondering the personally on my, in my brand, on my platform, I try not to be too political yep. and just sometimes say I inform, I just like to say information, but not really say where sure. I stand because yep. I don't want to ostracize anybody yeah, personally. Sure. But I'm wondering if what Barcel, how oh, Barcel so navigates I've all never this. been asked that question. No, okay. I think this is like one of the most politically ignorant group of people I've ever worked with. So like, <laughs> <laughs> to say that we would be like influenced by politics would be a stretch. Mm -hmm. No, I think that we're, um, <laughs> we have really good people here and we have yeah. really good eyes for the internet and people love what they do. Like, I think we have the most passionate, talented group of people, weirdos, just really great people. Um, who come from all different places with all different backgrounds, all different types of experience. Mm -hmm. um, and we've always kind of done our own thing and done it our own way. Right. And that's why we were able to grow so much is that we didn't listen to anyone else really. Yeah. And we didn't, we weren't like the whim of politics. Like mm -hmm. we weren't, we weren't trying to ride the coattails of what somebody else was doing Got or it. what people said we should do. Like right. I, I work on a lot of boards now. And one of the things that's like really frustrating for me on the boards is everyone is always trying to make everyone else happy mm -hmm. or they're always trying to play politics or be on the right side of whatever, whichever way the wind is blowing. Right. That's like not a great way to grow a business. In mm -hmm. my opinion, it avoids conflict. It makes things easy. It sure, it puts you in a good light and it gives you good favor. But it's, if you really want to build something, it's, it's kind of to your sex analogy. Like you got to love who you are. You got to right. know who you are. You yeah. got to understand what you want. You have to understand what you have to deliver. Mm -hmm. And you got to, you have to like protect that really fiercely. And that's yeah. how we've grown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's that really, sense? No, totally. That does make sense. Okay. It's kind of, it, it seems more real yeah. rather than superficial. It's yeah. not surface level. Definitely. Posting what seems important to post. 
rather just doing what feels authentic yeah, to you that's guys. Right. And then actually getting positive overall feedback, it seems. Yeah, in sometimes the end. really negative feedback. Right. But the other thing is like, you know, Barstool gets this rep of being controversial or people like Barstool or people hate Barstool. It's like Barstool is for people who like Barstool. If you don't like Barstool, like I'm not making content for you. Like we're not catering to you. And I think that in some ways a little bit of a radical concept, which Mm. is that we would not care about what people who don't like us think. Right. And that is like, I think that's a good thing for people in life. Like, Mm you know, you probably run into this, your family's definitely run into this, like people are not going to like you and they're not going to support you and Mm -hmm. they're not going to agree with who you are or what you have to say, or they're going to belittle you or diminish you or judge you. And like, that's just a fact. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, fuck it. I'm still going to do me Mm -hmm. in the best way I know how to do me. And like, that's true for a business too. Totally. At the end of the day, you are getting your self-value from yourself. Definitely. And so outside of what other people think, it doesn't yep. really, it shouldn't yeah, impact you. that's right. That shell should be there. Yeah. And I guess that applies to your company too. Definitely. Uh, and so two more questions okay. really quickly. I was just wondering, so you are this like incredible like digital disruptor okay. doing all these things in online and changing the way content is created. And so I'm just wondering, what do you see as a future of content creation uh, in the future of internet culture? Oh, I love that. I mean, if you had asked us three years ago, like, did we think TikTok would be what it is? I would have said no. Oh, like, wow. So it's hard to predict what it's going to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, but what I do know is that we will always have people who are comfortable being uncomfortable, being on the edge, yeah. listening to what the internet is saying, Got watching it. what people are doing. So, you know, maybe it's TikTok or maybe right. it's the new TikTok after that, or, you know, right. maybe it's, it's back to slow cooking and it's long form video right. or it's podcast. So I don't know what it is. I don't right. know what the format is, right. but the way I think about it is that the format is secondary. Like mm-hmm. the format almost doesn't matter. It's mm-hmm. what you have to say. It's how creatively you can say it. Mm-hmm. It's how consistent you are in doing it. Yeah. And so long as we have people who are great at doing that, like mm-hmm. everything else will follow. Yeah. No, that's really beautiful. Awesome. I think that's true. Yeah. It's kind of more about the brand rather than like the means of yeah, which it's that's shared. right. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Right. And then so the last thing is you have your own podcast too, yes. Token CEO. Yep. And you have a segment on there called like Work Like a Girl yep. that you do once a week or something like that. And so I'm curious, what does working like a girl mean to you and why was it important oh, to create this segment? Oh, that's a good question. Um, yeah. You should tell me what you think about that. Uh, um, work like, a, I, one of the things that, um, th- that I really believe in is you can be yourself and be successful. Cool. And I think that so many women at work and people at work feel like they have to be somebody else or Mm. looks like look perfect or be different or, or be, be same, Mm -hmm. be the same. Um, and I think it's especially true for women who are always trying to put themselves in someone else's image of what they think that person should be Mm -hmm. working. The other thing that happened to me at Barstool is that I was never public. I don't think I'm a great content creator, like, Mm. but I think, women and men looked at me equally. Like, like you don't find many female executives out there that right. guys and girls look up to or that mm. they're rooting for, or they're trying to learn from. Right. And I think working like a girl is like exactly that, which is you should be someone who, you know, has stamina, all the things we mm-hmm. talked about, stamina, creativity, right. independence, yeah. flaws, yeah. Um, you know, humility, like all those things. And that all sites, all, all sorts of people can look up to you mm-hmm. in, in what you do and how you do it. Mm. So it's redefining what like a female executive. Yeah, looks that's like, exactly right. Yeah. That's like really I awesome. think most female executives are very perfect. Like mm-hmm. the Sheryl Sandberg of it all, like mm-hmm. she's about being perfect. And right. I'm like, I think that's bullshit. Like so having a certain body size, having, having a certain, certain body size, conducting yourself, not swearing, right. you know? And I'm like, I just disagree with that. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so thank much you for so much, answering Miriam. all my questions. I this love is awesome. that. You want to do mine now? Yes. Okay. <laughs>